Hey guys, it's Rick Kirkman over here at RK Stables in Keystone Heights, Florida. And today's basic video is on how to maintain and muck your stall. Pretty simple stuff. So I know everybody knows about this stuff, but who knows, maybe that brand new person doesn't. So I'm gonna show you how we do it here and uh, give you some tips and tricks and tell you exactly how uh, we do it in order to save time and help our horses have good feet. So we'll be back in just a second. back I know this is the glamorous part of owning a horse is taking care of them and cleaning after them and you know it uh, it's a love that you have for the animal and that's why you do it and uh, I figured what a great thing to talk about is cleaning up after them in the stall well, I want you to think about this these horses are you know anywhere from 300 pounds from the little bitty guys all the way up to a horse that is um, 1,000 to 1,800 pounds, big, right? Well, the bigger they are, the bigger to poop. <laughs> and they poop a lot. So you're figuring an average horse is gonna poop around 30 to 50 pounds a day. You know, they're eating quite a bit of hay and grass and if you're feeding them grain, that's even more that they're eating. And uh, that's, uh, that's something that you gotta pick up after. What we do here at RK Stables is we put our horses out at night and we keep them in during the day, especially anybody that has white, you know, a white muzzle, white skin, pink skin, so they don't get sunburned, especially here in Florida. I mean, they don't have to be just human to get sunburned. These horses can get burnt as well. So with that being said, you know, being inside a stall for eight to 10 hours, it's quite a bit of time where they uh, can get, uh, you know, a lot of hay, we're feeding them hay through the fence, uh, through the gates. And uh, of course, when you're putting something in, something's coming out. So uh, what we're doing today is we're just cleaning up. So this is something that we do every single day. So let me go ahead and show you what it is that we actually do and um, talk about some of the tools that we use. So this is a typical 12 by 12 stall. This is probably not a good one. I have to replace a board. Somebody kicked it out last night. Um, this here is a wheelbarrow. We have quite a few stalls that we do. We do 16 stalls a day and um, sometimes twice a day. And you can see they, they were in and uh, we kind of keep on top of them so there's not lots of stuff on the ground. But uh, that's one of the beauty, beautiful things of maintaining your stalls and keeping them up. So uh, our particular stalls have a clay base where we put clay on the bottom. <laughs> If you dig down, there's clay, it's hard. Some people actually will put um, mats down, you know, they'll put mats down, they'll level out, put mats down, and, and then they'll put shavings. So as you can see, uh, there's quite a bit in this one. And there's some hay scattered along around the, in, the, in the sawdust. Now, these little guys here, this wheelbarrow is about 100 and, I don't know, about 120 bucks. It's nice because it doesn't have air in the wheels. Those are solid rubber tires. This is made by Rubbermaid. It's a commercial uh, product and it's not one of your basic, you know, cheapies that cost you $89 and then uh, you use it for five or 10 minutes and the next thing you know, it needs air. <laughs> the other thing is, uh, is uh, this is your main tool here. This is a, a mucking rake. Now, I'm almost six foot tall, so I like having a rake that's real long. Uh, it's easier for me because I'm not bent over then. I'm standing upright, and it's real simple. All you're going to do is scoop, right? Now, if you're a shorter person, um, maybe the smaller rakes are, are better. A smaller wooden rake might be a better uh, choice for you. Uh, I can show you those as well. But, um, yeah, it's pretty simple. All you do is, if you've ever had a cat, you just scoop underneath it, shake it a little bit, let the shavings drop back down, pick a little bit more up, and then when you got all the waste, you just dump it in there. Now we use a tractor. One of us will drive a tractor and the other person will 
we'll do the actual mucking. And once we've picked up all this nastiness, we look for the wet spot where there's, uh, you know, they've been peeing. A lot of times they'll pee in one specific place and uh, that makes life a lot easier. And we'll dig up some of that and uh, we'll go ahead and get that out. Also, it looks like here's a, a spot that's wet. So what we'll do is we'll dig some of this out and then we'll replace what we take out with a little bit more shavings. Um, we also will rake out, once we get all the, the yuck out of here, we will go ahead and uh, we'll rake the hay out. Hay that's been stepped on, peed on, pooped on, you know, you might as well just throw it away because there's nothing good gonna come out of that. Um, that's pretty simple stuff there, so common sense. So what we'll do is we'll level it off. And once you think you've got it all, <laughs> when you start to level this out, you're gonna find out there's, there's more. <laughs> So, you know, just take your time. Um, this is great for the kids to do, but uh, what I would do is I would definitely walk behind them and make sure that they're actually doing it. One of the reasons why uh, mucking the stall is so important is if you're keeping them in, inside for any period of time is you want the stall to be clean because their feet are very important. So if you have ever heard the saying, no feet, no horse, it all starts right here, you know. Of course, barrier work is a big deal, keeping them trim and clean and all that. But um, when it comes to the very beginning, bacteria grows in this stuff. So if they're peeping and peeing and pooing in there and they're stepping on it and stomping on it, guess where it ends up? It ends up between the, the hoof and the, the frog and bacteria start to grow and then you get things like thrush which is a whole nother story. You can watch one of my other videos that talks about hoof care. Uh, Jeremy Zakowski, he uh, is our farrier and he's helped us out with a couple videos as well, talking about this and, yep. You know, you just wanna give them a nice dry base for them to go ahead and, and be able to walk on. Don't let it build up and get out of, out of hand. If you do it every day, you can do a stall in five minutes. So that's pretty quick and easy. If you're cleaning the stall out fast, five minutes worth, you know, it, it's definitely worth it for the health of your horse's feet. The other thing is, if you have nice clean bedding down, um, it makes sense because sometimes they like to lay down. A lot of times you won't see your horse lay down unless they're really comfortable. Now, if they have their own stall and they're comfortable being locked in and they feel good, a lot of times they'll lay down and, and they'll actually rest. So that's another reason. You want them laying down and pee and poo and all that other stuff and this way they can go ahead and stay clean when they roll you don't want to come in here the next day and find your horse all nasty and and, <laughs> and covered in that nastiness because then now you got to wash the horse brush the horse groom the horse which you should be doing anyways every three or four days just to keep them their coats nice fresh and pretty so you know as i do this video i i started thinking about more of the reasons why you know, muck in the stall is so important. You know, we covered a few of the, the things already, but, um, you know, you gotta think about it. One of the most aggravating things about having a horse barn is the flies. If you keep your stalls maintained, that's something that you really don't have to worry about as much. You do need to do preparations to keep the flies out. I mean, last year, you know, one of our, uh, one of our boarders was so gracious as to introduce us to uh, fly predators, and those fly predators were amazing. But we really didn't know how well they did um, until this year. So <laughs> we found out this year because we stopped using the fly predators, we wanted to see what would happen. And oh my goodness, we went from having just a few flies throughout the barn to thousands of flies all over. And that leads me to my next thing that I wanted to tell you about mucking your stalls. When your muck buckets are full, right? When your wheelbarrow's full of poop, 
You gotta get rid of it. You gotta put it somewhere. Do yourself a favor and put it as far away from the barn as possible. Now, if you're pushing a wheelbarrow, that's like, oh man, I don't wanna go so far. It's a lot of walking. I'll tell you what, it makes a lot of sense. Get at least 100 yards away from your barn if you can. That's why the tractor is such a, a blessing. It, it, it helps because you're just sitting and riding, dumping it. And you know what? You paid for it in the grain. That's what's in there. The hay, the grass that's on your property, that's what that is. So put it out in a pile and start stacking it up. It's great fertilizer. Put it out on your flower gardens. I would check first to see whether or not it works for your vegetables because I don't know, the pH might be a little strong for some of your vegetables or whatnot. Uh, and maybe you don't have any place to put it. Well, you can respread it out on your pastures. Um, that's one thing you could do. Another thing you can do too is, it's pretty simple. Um, save your bags from your feed bags. And as that manure turns into compost, which is very fast, I mean, it gets pretty hot out there. Uh, you flip it over a couple times. You can use your hay rake or whatever you want. And just break it up and start filling hay bags or your feed bags, excuse me, not hay bags. <laughs> Fill your hay, uh, feed bags and then put it on Craigslist or, or on Facebook. I'm gonna tell you, people will show up, people will come and take it away. And in some cases you can sell it, sell it for a dollar a bag, $2 a bag, $5 a bag, that's a bit, bit much. But still, nevertheless, you're getting rid of one, all the feed bags if you have quite a few horses. And two, you can get rid of that manure because it's leaving your property and that's a big plus. Yeah, you know, I forgot to tell you guys that, uh, you know, where you get shavings, I mean, there's, if you only have one or two horses, one stall, this is the stall we're getting ready to clean. But if you look in the very back, you see back here, we will throw excess shavings up against the wall so we can just drag that out after we've mucked the stall and cleaned it out, get the wet spot cleared out. Um, that's one place where you can store your excess shavings, um, which is pretty cool. It's the best way for us to do it because we don't want to allocate an area for yards and yards of of uh, sawdust. Now, some people like the, the thicker um, shavings and the, the thicker shavings uh, for us. just doesn't work for us. We, we like to use the shavings that are super fine, sort of like a cat litter. It's just quicker. Uh, it's more efficient for us. It's faster to get it in and out. Um, but you can go to Tractor Supply or Rural King or someplace like that and you can pick up shavings for probably about five, bo five bucks a bag. Uh, what we do is we order it from a landscape company and they deliver us 12 yards at a time. And what we try to do is we've got about three inches of shavings in each stall and we just try to maintain that. As we take out, we put more, we refill it from the back of the stall. Uh, and that's the easiest way for us to do it. Now you can go to, uh, it, you know, if there's a, a sawmill or something near you, you can go over there and see if they'll let you have the shavings. And some some of these sawmills actually will kiln dry their, their shavings and they'll sell it to you. Uh, pretty cheap, a lot cheaper than buying it from Tractor Supply or, or one of these other places. Um, as far as uh, what type to use, um, honestly, it's, it's, it's a preference. I like stuff that falls through the rake. Uh, this way I'm not throwing away a bunch of shavings that doesn't need to be thrown away, which saves money in the long run. Um, so that's that. And also having the shavings down versus having a dirt floor, a straight clay floor, uh, it will reduce the amount of bug issue that you have as far as flies go. So that's another reason why we, we like the shavings. One, and it makes the barn smell really good. Uh, that barn doesn't smell like um, uh, pee or, or just stink you know it's it's a, got a fresh smell and if you have a boarding facility you want that to happen you want people to come and say wow this is where I want my horse I guess that's about it I'll take a couple more pictures and uh, this is a quickie I told you if you have any questions hey do me a favor throw them uh, in the comments down below if you have any uh, future videos that you'd like to see go ahead and put it down there as well and um, if you like the video Thumbs up. Hey, if you have a friend that just got new horses, tell them about us over here at RK Stables and get them on our channel so that they can start learning some, some stuff and, and maybe helping them get past uh, all the beginner's mistakes that they could possibly make. Well, that's it. That's all we have for today. We love you. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Let's catch you on the next one. This was an RK Stables production. 
Thank you for watching and have a blessed day.